Hi, my name's Steve Smith from Truecall, and we're looking for £100,000 for 7.5% of the business. Truecall stops nuisance phone calls. Now, I've worked in the call centre industry for 25 years, and with my partner, carried out research for the Telephone Preference Service. We were shocked to discover the anger and anxiety that many people felt whenever they received an unwanted telephone call. Somebody needed to solve this problem. So we invented Truecall. Truecall simply plugs into your telephone line at home in between your wall socket and your telephone. And it checks every call you receive before letting your phone ring. If it's a friend or a family member, the call gets through as normal. But if it doesn't recognise the caller, then it asks them to identify themselves. Hello, you're through to the Smith. Please say your name after the tone. Oh, hi there, it's Steve from Truecall. Now, a telemarketer knows you're not going to accept their call, so they'll hang up and you won't get disturbed. Hello, you have a call from... Oh, hi there, it's Steve from Truecall. Now I know who's calling, I can decide how to handle the call. I can accept the call. I can accept the call and put the caller onto my friends list, so next time they get straight through to me. If I'm busy, I can get Truecall to take a message for me. Or, I can zap the caller. We're not interested in your call. Please hang up now and don't call us again. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to leave that on all the time. Yeah. <laughs> this is an opportunity to get in at the ground floor of a completely new market with an innovative British product. To build a profitable business while making people's lives a little easier. Thank you very much for listening and I'd be very happy to take your questions. In a near faultless pitch, Steve Smith has successfully demonstrated his device to eradicate nuisance phone calls. He's asking for £100,000, but offering just a 7.5% stake in his invention. Deborah Meaden has been listening intently. Hi, I'm Deborah. Boy, do I recognise the problem. <laughs> Although I actually quite like to get to speak to some of these people, but it would be quite nice to have somebody intercepting. Um, what does the business look like? Can you just talk us through the what yes. you're expecting the business? Sure. What it has done to date and what you're expecting the business okay. to do? Okay. Um, we've sold a thousand. QVC have placed an order. We had a meeting with John Lewis and um, So they, what are your your financial projections the financial, then going forward? Fin yeah. Financial projections. We believe that we'll make about fifteen thousand profits this year. Um, next year four hundred thousand. Um, 2011, 800,000, and 2012, 1.5 million. It's an impressive pitch backed up by exciting sales forecasts. Peter Jones, who made his millions in the telecoms industry, is keen to find out more. What price do you sell them at? Um, the, uh, the retail price is £97. And what do you buy them for? Um, £27 landed from China. I'm sorry, the cost price is 27 and the wholesale price is how much? 55. OK. And what could I compare that price to? The telephone companies all offer two particular services, one called anonymous caller rejection. There's another service which allows you to block a handful of numbers, 10 numbers. A true call can block 500 numbers. A million people in the UK are paying £3.50 to £4 a month for those services. So they're paying um, about £50 a year, and I think that compares, as a rental price, that compares very well against a true call product which does so much more for £100 purchase. Steve, if I went to a shop to buy one of those handsets, what would I expect to pay for it? £40-£50, up to £100, depending on the style. She, yeah, she, it's £40 or £50 for that phone, and then if I want a true call on it, I've got to pay £97 for that. Yes. Twice as much as the phone. Yes sort of puts me off a bit. It's Steve's first setback. Will Peter Jones share his rival's concerns? I think this is a backward step. If you were to find a way to utilise your technology in one unit and have a true call handset, now I think it gets, starts to get interesting. I recognise that with no background in developing telecoms products in the past, going to the major handset manufacturers with a concept like this 
was going to be a long and uphill struggle. But having made a success of that, it makes our next step, which is getting it into handsets, much easier. And it can also be used on the mobile network. And how much did you put in? I've put in um, about £700,000. Yes. £700,000 yes. sterling? Yes. Steve, are you, are you a wealthy guy, then? I sold my last business for £5 million in 1999. Wow. I then um, invested in and became a director of a web hosting company, and we sold that um, about two years ago. And what did you sell that for? The company sold for £67 million. And how much of that did you own? Uh, a small a small proportion. I think I made I made one and a half million on that. I'm, I'm too frightened to carry on because at this rate, <laughs> at this rate, you'll have more money than me. <laughs> it's an impressive display of business acumen from Steve. Silence reigns in the den as every dragon contemplates their next move. Steve, I quite like this. This is a very neat product, and I am very excited by the concept of it becoming part of a handset where I think the market grows even bigger. Um, I'd like to make you an offer for half the amount for 12.5%. Thank you. James Kahn has broken the deadlock. His offer has set a benchmark but it would require Steve to give up far more than the 7.5% equity stake that had been on the table. This sounds like a really good product. You've got a proven track record. But I recognise that actually the use of this technology, I'm sure, will have many other uses. So, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm kind of looking for my reason not to invest. <laughs> uh, and, I, and I can't find one. So I'm going to make you a much healthier offer than the one you've already received. So I'm going to offer you £100,000. That's all of it for 12.5%. In an aggressive move, Deborah Meaden has massively undercut her rival dragon. Is Duncan Bannatyne willing to compete at this level? I'll tell you what I am, Steve. Um, I would have matched James's offer, but that's probably too low for you now, considering Deborah's offer. So what I'll do is... I'll underwrite half of any offer made by Peter. So if Peter offers you half the money, I'll equal his half. A wily Duncan Bannatyne is aligning himself with Peter Jones to capitalise on the Dragon's industry expertise. But in the den, it's every investor for him or herself. I don't think I've ever known it to be like this before. And I've actually liked Deborah. <laughs> But she's been crafty because she realises that to get the deal, she's got to go in low. Mm. I'll be perfectly honest with you. I'm sitting here thinking I add probably the best value to this type of opportunity than anybody. Tomorrow morning, I could have your products on sale in Hong Kong, in China. I can have your products on sale in South America, in Chicago, in Australia, in Germany, France and the UK. Nobody can do that. I will offer you the full amount, but in return, I would want 15% of the company. And also, I am happy to share that three ways with Duncan and James. A determined Peter Jones clearly wants this deal, but on his terms. But retail magnate Theo Pafitis is now ready to break his silence. I've been sitting there quietly, listening to what people have got to say. But, you know, for me, it's an obvious product. It's a great product. So I'd love to be in business with you. My position is obviously in the retail market. UK-wide distribution in seconds. I have a telecom background as well. Um, so, I'll match Deborah's offer. For the full amount? For the full amount. I'll come back in there and I will say that if you consider having two dragons on board, 
I would be happy to share mine with Theo. I don't know how Theo, Theo feels. But that wouldn't be a problem. Steve has split the dragons into two rival camps. Will he sacrifice the better equity deal or the telecom's expertise? My mind is split between the two benefits of having more than one dragon involved against the concern that perhaps with a smaller amount of equity it would be less important of an investment to you individually. May I? May I come back to you, Peter, with a counter-offer? I came in here today um, um, with a target for what we wanted to achieve, and I really would like to get an investment with a 10% equity stake. Then I'd be very happy to shake hands with you on a deal. So you want a single investment? I, I was asking the question. In a risky move that could alienate the other dragons, Steve has singled out Peter Jones as a potential partner. Will his tactic backfire? If that's really important to you, I will drop down to 12.5%, which gets you nearly there. I'd accept that. In some of the most tense negotiations the Den has seen, Steve Smith eventually walks away with an investor who's a perfect fit for his company. Well, Steve, very well done. I mean, if anyone could be said to have slayed the dragons, that, that was it for you there. Yes, I'm only just calming down now. Once you'd had a couple of offers, it was pretty plain sailing for you, wasn't it? I was keen to get different dragons involved, but I think it, bec and it would have been nice to have had two or even at one point an offer to have three together. But I think, um, from Peter's point of view, I think he needs a reasonable share of a business to put his effort into a product. And I think, with Peter behind us, we'll, this will work very well. Look, really, very, very best of luck and uh, a very, very a spectacularly good performance in the den. Very good. Thank you.